Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So many of you actually wanted me to make videos about KMM, about Kotlin multi-platform. For those of you who actually hear that for the first time and don't know what that is, it's basically a way to use Kotlin to make an iOS and Android app together with Kotlin. So it's not fully cross-platform like Flutter, so you don't have just one code base. Um, instead, you just have a big portion of code that's shared between iOS and Android. Um, so basically business logic, data layer, all that stuff can uh, solely be done in Kotlin. And you only need to write the UI natively. So on Android for Jetpack Compose, uh, with Jetpack Compose and on iOS with Swift UI. That way you can, in the end, have an iOS and Android app that yeah shares the same business logic so you just eliminate having to define the, the same logic and the same data layer for two different apps and this is a great idea so the idea comes from JetBrains uh, those are the guys who actually developed that it's great um, I actually tried it out and I want to give you the answer here why I don't make videos about KMM at least yet because I am a little bit disappointed for now which, yeah, I will explain why that is the case here in this video. I still want to highlight that this video should not put KMM in a bad light because it's still an alpha here when I record this in um, February 2022 and they actually announced to put it at least in beta in this year's spring. So let's see how everything develops. However, Let's talk about the issues I face and the issues I have with KMM at the moment and why I'm a little bit disappointed. So the biggest issue it has is that it's an absolute, an absolute pain to configure. So you pretty much open your project and Android Studio will throw the first error in your face. So far, so good, you solve the error. You maybe install some third-party software or whatever you need to actually run this. Um, for example, there's a CocoaPods, which is a dependency manager for iOS, pretty popular. You need to install that, not an issue, but it will lead to issues when being used with KMM. At least that was the case for me, and I've heard so many other people who have the same issues. So for example, this CocoaPods actually, um, or rather Android Studio always told me, hey, CocoaPods is not installed. Even though it was installed, if I used it from the command line by myself, then everything worked well but Android Studio didn't like it, then it's an absolute pain to actually get Gradle, Gradle configuration right. Because in the end, the way KMM works is you have a multi-module application by default and you have a shared module. So the shared module will contain all the shared code between iOS and Android. And then you have an Android and an iOS module, which both, well, just contain their native code, like the Android Jetpack Compose code and the iOS Swift UI code. Then on the one hand, it was always a pain to actually be able to rebuild the project because that's what you need to do every time you change something in this shared module. You click rebuild in Android Studio and it tells you can't rebuild, didn't find project to rebuild, whatever. However, if you run this from the command line, like with uh, the Gradle wrapper, everything works just fine. On the other hand, uh, I had tons of issues with Xcode, so the IDE in which you develop iOS apps it never really found the shared module and it had some other errors where I actually needed to exclude some specific CPU architectures because I'm developing on an M1 MacBook and that came with other issues and it was an absolute pain. So overall, I really needed like five, six hours maybe to just get my first Hello World app working. And yeah, it's not like it works once and then you're good, then you can develop your app, then you can work on the project. No, actually every little change you then make can can come with new issues and it can break everything again. So it really feels like you're, you're building a huge house of cards and any small change, any small mistake, you just take away one card and everything falls apart. That's how KMM feels at the moment. So that sadly does not really make it usable yet. And this is just for my setup. I have seen other people have so many more different errors that I did not face. So it's very specific also in terms of which which kind of a laptop you use. Um, well, you have to use a Mac here, at least if you want to make the iOS app as well. 
Um, but then, yeah, it totally depends what kind of CPU you have. Do you have an Intel processor? Do you have an M1 processor? It's really a pain. However, by simply experimenting with KMM, trying around with it, I got a really good first impression of it, an impression of how it works, how these different modules work together. Like there are some new Kotlin language features we can now use, how that works. And I must say, it's really promising. So I really like the idea behind it. I like that you share big portions of your code, but you do the UI um, separately in native language because the advantage of that is you in the end get two native apps. It's not like with Flutter where you have one code base and the apps look exactly the same way on both platforms. No, with KMM you have two native apps. You have a native iOS app and a native Android app that both look and feel native on their corresponding platform because they both use the native UI controls and all that stuff. And if there's some uh, feature on the iOS side that you only want on the iOS side, you just put it in the iOS module and you also write it in Swift, as far as I understood at least. So I didn't get that far. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, yeah, that is the big advantage here that I seen came um, on the one hand, of course, that it used Kotlin, which is an amazing language. And on the other hand, that you get, yeah, two native apps and you don't have that uh, problem with Flutter that it that you just get one app that doesn't feel native on both platforms. So overall, taking the raw idea of KMM, I see it as superior over things like Flutter and React Native. So if JetBrains actually releases the beta of KMM in spring sometime this year, then I will definitely try it again. And if they improve these issues, which I'm sure they are actually aware of, because I also posted some of my issues in my Instagram story and I get so many replies from people who actually have the same issues and who, who needed a, like a whole work day to make a Hello World app. As soon as JetPrains fixes that, I think KMM is an amazing thing. And in that case, if it's easier to configure and yeah, leads to less errors, I will definitely make tutorials about that and I'm very looking forward to that. What is actually your experience with KMM? Have you already tried it? It would be really cool if you could let us know in the comments. Apart from that, I wish you an amazing day. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you back in the next one. Bye bye.